The women there are human garbage whose parents don't love them. I cannot believe he said that. Yo, what is good, y'all? Jail here, and I'm back again, I'm back again, I'm back again. Yeah, I'm back again, I'm back again, I'm back again. Yeah, I'm back again, I'm back again, I'm back again. With another video. So I just stumbled upon a video called Feminist Getting Owned on the News. And let's get right into it because my battery is literally about to die, man. I'm at 18%. Let's get it. My daughter, there's no way in hell she's going there. But with my sons, I hope they have a great time. And oh, boy. With women. Alcohol poisoning. Oh, yeah. Boys One a year. A that happens bed. everywhere. That's youth. Getting pregnant <laughs> is much more harmful than having some uncomfortable sex and getting mugged. The women there are human garbage whose parents don't love them. I cannot believe he said that. But listen, I believe that there should be different standards for boys and girls because we're biologically different, man. The same rules can apply. If I had a girl with child, I would tell her to get with the best guy possible and to not give it up so easily, man. But if I had a boy, then I don't have to worry about him getting pregnant. I just have to worry about him getting girl is pregnant, so I would tell him to wrap it up and be responsible. I will pay more attention to my daughter because she can get pregnant and then the guy that impregnated her can leave and just leave her alone with the kid. So there's way more risk involved, man. To discuss this and the wider implications of the columnist to broadcast to Milo Yiannopoulos and the journalist Rennie Edo Lodge there in our central London studios for us this evening. Very good evening to you both. Rennie, how do you feel about being called different because you're hardwired differently. Uh, I'm sure it's not something you've uh, failed to hear before. It just seems to keep cropping up. Is it necessary? It's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's 50s thinking, you know. I mean, it's just so ridiculous, this biological determinism. Frankly, you know, interests and talent and, you know, passions for particular topics, subjects, sports, arts, whatever, like, they're not relegated to either gender, but unfortunately, because of some stereotypical thinking, often one gender is encouraged to pursue, you know, a sport or an art more so than the other. And, and actually, when you look at um, my colleague at The Telegraph, Radhika Sagani, she wrote um, a piece just this morning speaking to um, like young girls who play chess and actually what she found out is that they're dropping out at the age of 12 probably because you know they're not encouraged or you know there's an environment around that's telling them that it's not for them it's not cool etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know this hardwired brain stuff like it's 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 retro sexism so milo yiannopoulos does it matter if men and women are wired differently have different skills no, it doesn't matter in the sense that they are equal but different, but it simply isn't true to say that there is no difference whatsoever between the aptitudes of men and women. And it is um, without question true that there are some biological differences between men and women, and we know that from our anatomy. Um, but we also know it from experiments uh, that we do on young children before they've had the opportunity to be socialised, the sorts of toys that they go for. And that holds true actually for other bits of the animal kingdom as well. Some of the reason why girls drop out um, of STEM subjects at college and and uh, chess clubs is because they keep losing and one of the reasons they keep losing is that it does seem to be the case that chess as a game plays to some of the male intellectual virtues and when Simon Baron Cohen talks about these he, the way he describes it is um, men are good at systematizing and women are good at empathizing and there is some reason to suppose that that may have some bio, uh, basis in biology it's very trendy these days to say that everything is socially determined but that's not what the science says and it's not either what common sense says because if it were true these Days, there would be a lot more representation of women in the sciences, in astrophysics, in philosophy, in mathematics, and in chess, but there isn't. So, Rennie, does that, does that make sense, and does, does it really matter? I mean, should we just accept that we are slightly different, have different skills, pursue them, or, or should, you know, should we all be striving to be as good as each other at everything? It just it seems really reductive, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look around at your, you know, male and female friends and families you'll see a vast like a huge wide variety and diversity in interests and talents and passions right and also i think that it's ridiculous to assume that the reason why one gender is overrepresented overrepresented in a field is because the other gender is not quite up to it i mean often you know, if a, if a field is homogenous, right, which, as we can see, chess is homogenous, that, that 
also brings with it a culture that makes things unwelcoming for people who do not quite fit the bill. Like it's so, you know, it's almost victim blaming in a way to suggest that the reason why there's an overrepresentation of a particular kind of person is because the other kind of person just isn't quite up to it. Like, it's ridiculous. If that was the case, my, you know, my, I mean, we don't me, live in a meritocracy. So. It's nice It's nice to have this sort of vague, waffly, sort of everyone has varied interests. Um, what the science suggests is that, for example, um, when it comes to IQ, IQ is distributed differently between the sexes. Now, IQ gets a really bad rap because it's not a great indicator of some things. It's said to be sexist, it's said to be biased towards white people, whatever. Um, the point is that it tests, in this case, it, it tests all of the skills that make you good at chess really well. It's about puzzles. It's about games, exactly the skills that make you good at chess, make you good at IQ. Now, the way that IQ is distributed differently in the sexes is that women tend to cluster around the mean. Women are more likely to have an IQ that is somewhere near the average, whereas men go right to the top or right to the bottom more often, which is why you get uh, great genius. Uh, That's true, because some of the smartest people in the world are men. Some of the dumbest people in the world are men. Well, artists and uh, philosophers, but it's also why men fill the prisons, because men seem to occupy um, more of the ends of the, of the IQ scale. And now IQ is pretty much the best measure we have to predict whether somebody will be good at chess. And it, um, what it proves, and what it also proves, is that men and women can talk forever. It's been a pleasure talking to you both. <laughs> so I don't necessarily hate feminism. I think there is some good to feminism, like it liberated women to make them be able to pursue whatever career they want to pursue. So now that they are liberated, now that they have the freedom, why is it that most of the STEM fields and most of manual labor fields like construction, offshore drilling and things like that, why is it still dominated by men? Because women are not choosing these fields, man. They aren't choosing these fields because they aren't interested. Men are interested in things. Women are more interested in people like psychology, sociology, like being teachers, being social workers. That's that's where the difference comes within biology. And you can't ignore the biology, man. It's just ingrained within us. You cannot ignore it. Earlier this week about domestic violence, for our viewers who haven't heard them, uh, here's what Mark had to say. Blokes have lost self-esteem, they've lost their job, they're welfare dependent, they've got other troubles, drugs, alcohol in their life. Uh, it's that loss of self-esteem where I think they use the domestic violence as a coping mechanism to get over all the other uh, crap that they've got in their lives. Like, I can't even lie to y'all, I just farted like crazy just now. I don't know if y'all saw me clench, but yeah, I was clenching hard, bro. Obviously this has caused some outrage, Mark. Do you stand by those comments and do we really need to be making excuses for perpetrators of domestic violence? Well, Eddie, the critics haven't done their research, you see. I was paraphrasing there a very important report in New South Wales from the coroner's court where they look at the domestic violence deaths and produce some conclusions about them. And uh, uh, they talk about a coping mechanism where men living in poverty, underclass circumstances, poor self-esteem, use domestic violence as a macabre, tragic type of coping mechanism. So the critics in this area run on emotion and ideology instead of facts and actually going to read the report. I urge people to read that report. Well, the facts and if you are haven't read it, you're not doing justice to the issue. Mark, the facts are that domestic violence doesn't just affect people in low socioeconomic circumstances. It stretches right across all levels of society, doesn't it? Well, it's concentrated there. Eddie, the basic fact is that for every domestic incident in a middle class family in Australia. There are 10 in a public housing estate, 25 in Indigenous communities. Uh, that's borne out by crime statistics around the country. So you can't really deal with this serious issue in a proper way unless you're providing accurate analysis. And to say there's an epidemic, that's wrong. To say it's evenly spread across the community, that's wrong. To say that it's a product of patriarchy where somehow men have been genetically engineered to dominate women, that's ridiculous. Do you, st so do you stand by your, your statement here. that women are, women are safer than they've ever been before, given that there are close to 80 deaths from domestic violence across Australia last year? Yeah, well, Eddie, I urge you to read the ABS personal safety survey that shows I've that since 1996... It. You have read it? Well, yeah. you'll notice that since 1996, the rate of domestic uh, uh, assault and uh, incidents has, has come down according to that report. So right, the world is a lot safer than it was back in the past. We're not living like savages, man. We got all these different systems that's built up to protect and serve our community. Yes, violence and crime is still around, but it's not as prevalent as it was like back in the days, you know what I'm saying? You can only go by the official statistics rather than left-wing feminist hysteria. So you do believe that in fact Rosie Batty from you quote, causes more harm than good? 
Well, I don't think it's helpful to demonise men in these circumstances. I don't think it's helpful to go around talking about an epidemic when actually in Australia the domestic assault rate against women in a 12-month period is 1%. Now, I wish it was 0%, of course. We all want it to be 0%. But I know enough about politics to realise that if you want to analyse and get solutions to a problem, you have to be accurate. And saying there's an epidemic, we sort of suggest the rate is 50 or 60%. It's the one percent, and they're blowing it up, making it seem like oh, 60, 70, 80 percent of women are involved in domestic abuse. Like, no, it's one percent. So stop exaggerating and actually report it true to the data. Stop trying to push an agenda and just say it for what it is. In fact, it's one percent. That does a disservice to the women in need because you're dealing in fantasy rather than fact. Mark, speaking as a fellow bloke, I, I just we've just got to be so careful about these messages and, and making excuses for this. I, I, I just. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. No one. Yeah, he doesn't want to get cancelled, man. There are certain things you can't say on live television, for sure. Other than propaganda that people put out there that's not supported by official government reports, official government surveys, and there's nothing I've said that's not factual. Now we've had uh, a few items here where you've tried to say, oh, well, maybe that's not the case. I've got references, I've got reports, I've got official surveys that back up the facts and figures that I'm putting out there. Now, it mightn't be the information that people want to hear, but I'd rather have a debate where you can deal in reality rather than left-wing feminist fantasy. All right, Mark Latham. And I agree. I definitely agree, man, because a lot of there's a lot of agenda pushing going on, especially with the media, man. But, yeah, this was a pretty in interesting video, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are about any clips in this video. And I'll see you on the next one, man. And feel free to link videos in the comments, too, you guys want me to react to. I got y'all, man. I'm trying to push these videos out daily, so I got some time. Send me some links. I'll see y'all.